Hello everybody, today we will be going over a trigonometry problem at the IB Math AISL level. So, we have a national park, which is in the form of the triangle ABC, as shown in the following diagram. We have the side length AB, uh, which is this guy here, side length BC, which is this guy here, and angle ABC, which is this guy here. So that's all the info they give us. And we need to calculate the side length AC in kilometers. So, when approaching trigonometry problems, your plan A is using the sine rule. See, now if you've seen a couple of my other videos, the sine rule works in pairs. See, so we need to ask yourself, do we have any pairs, right? This angle here goes with that side, so that is half a pair because we're missing this guy. This angle here goes with that guy, so again, half a pair. This angle here goes with that guy, again, half a pair. See, so I have a bunch of half pairs. Unfortunately, I cannot use the sine rule. In this case, I need at least one full pair and one half pair in, er in order to make it work. So if the sine rule doesn't work, we need to roll with the cosine rule. See? Now the cosine rule looks a little bit weird. So let's talk about what's going on over there. See? The cosine rule, um, these both of these formulas are literally the same. See? They're just written in different ways. Sometimes one is more convenient. It depends on the context. We'll go over that in a second. Now, there is one important thing to notice, see? In both of these scenarios, the C is special, see? Let's go over why it's special on the one on the bottom, because I think it's easier to see. For example, the C on the bottom has a negative in front of it, while the A and the B have a positive. And so, the A and the B can switch around. Even down here, you can switch around, because 2 times 1 and 1 times 2 is the same, cierto, for A and B. But for the negative, for the subtraction, it's not exactly the same. So the C that you define is special. See, it's special because it interacts differently in the formula. Same with up here, the C is the only one with a cosine. Cierto? So careful with that, right? Careful with that. Now, why do I say that you define the C? Well, because if we look at this, uh, this down here in the triangle, cierto? big C is this guy here, paired with little c, which is that guy there. Big A is this guy here, paired with that side over here, cierto? And Big B over here, the 58, is paired with that side over there, see? This is how the triangle is given to you. And if you try to plug this into the cosine rule, for example, the one on the on the top, cierto? You're going to have that, yeah, little c is this guy. Um, A is going to be 66. And so it looks good because you're plugging stuff in. And then you counter that B is alone, cierto? minus 2 times AB, so we said 66, times da, 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 B we said is, we don't know, times cosine C, cierto? Cosine C, we don't know either. And so if we do this, we're going to notice immediately that we have two variables. We have variable B, and we have variable C, cierto? And of course, here's other B. And so you can't solve this, because this is, this is like having an X here, and the y here, cierto? And so if I tell you, oh, get x alone, you're going to have a y going around. If I tell you get y alone, you're going to have an x going around. So this is not good enough. You need to have only one variable. Again, you need to have only one variable. So how can we do that? Well, notice this guy here is an angle, cierto? It's the big letter. This is called I C, big letter. So do we have any angles? Why, yes, of course we do. We have this angle over here. And so we need to redefine what A, what B, and what B is and C, of course, in order to like fit the formula, see? And so the IB tries to trick you, giving you a triangle ABC, exactly for falling into this scenario over there, right? And so you're gonna say, fuck you, I'm not gonna fall into that. And you're gonna erase A, you're gonna erase B, you're gonna erase C, and you will define it however the heck you want in order to make your equation work, see? So I'm gonna erase all of this over here because now you're in charge and you're defining A, B, and C. For you, it's convenient that this big guy is C, cierto? Because it's the one angle you have, and you know that the cosine rule needs an angle, cierto? All right, cool. So if this guy's big C, this little guy is, I mean, this over there is little C. Um, I'm just going to call this guy over here B, cierto? Little B, for example. That goes to show that this guy is big B. And finally, if this guy's little A, then this guy over here is big A, see? So that is my current scenario. And of course, this goes with this, this goes with that, see? All right, cool. 
So again, you defined A, B, and C in order to make the formula essentially work, right? And so now we're going to plug in, and you're going to see the magic right away. A uh, little, I'm going to use the one on top, cierto? You can use the one on the bottom, it's just a little more tedious. Um, I'll use the one on the top, see? Okay? So using the one on the top, little c is the side we're trying to find, actually. It's length AC, so that's good. So little c squared equals a squared, we said with 66, this guy here, cierto? Plus b, which is 49, this guy here, minus 2 times a, b. times cosine c, which we said was 58, okay? And so now, bada bim, bada boom, there's only one variable. And so this is something that we can actually solve. Before, we couldn't solve it because we had two variables. So watch out for that, okay? Now I'm going to plug in all of this into my calculator. I'm going to end up with c equals square roots of this whole guy, cierto? And it's going to take me a second, but here it is in the calculator. Okay, we end up with C being equal to 57.701. Now this is length, so I'm going to put the units as well, kilometers. See? All right, cool. That is part A. For part B, we need to calculate the area of the park. Now, this is a triangle. See? What we're used to is using base times height divided by 2. Do we have the height of this triangle? Unfortunately, we do not. The height would be pretty much there, see? And as hard as we can try, it's not something we can get. Also, I mean, sorry. This formula here, you usually want to use with right triangles, see? Usually. Why? Because H is really easy to get in a right triangle. Since this is not a right triangle, we actually have the formula up here that, that is in your formula booklet for the area of a triangle. That always, always works. See? Now, the only thing that matters in this formula here is that the sides that you pick, A and B, have, have to have nothing to do with the angle C. Cierto? I think visually this might make a little more sense. See? For example, this angle here, the C, the 58, this side has nothing to do with the other two, right? So this angle here has nothing to do with the other two in terms of pairs. See, they're not related in that sense. And so another way you can look at it is that you need the angle and the sides that are next to it, cierto? Which in this case, I use 66, I can use 49. All right, so let's plug in with the formula up there. We're gonna have that the area is one half times A we said was 66 times B, we said was 49, times sine C, which is sine 58. Again, trust the process. You can always use this formula with any triangle. It does not have to be a right triangle. Plug it into our calculator. Give me a second. All right, cool beans. We end up with 1,371 point da, 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 29371. Seven seven one. See. Make sure that you do not forget your units. In this case, it was kilometer kilometers squared. See, squared because it's an area. All right. So that was for part A. This was for part B. That is the problem. The biggest thing is being familiar with the cosine rule. Again, don't fall into the trap that the IB does. You define A. You define B. You define C in a manner that you can end up with only one variable in your equation. Usually, your compass, your north, is going to be what angle they give you, cierto? So whatever angle they give you, immediately say, all right, that guy's big C, period. And then you can plug in and not have the problem that we had earlier, which was two variables for one equation. Now we have one variable for one equation, and it worked out. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the trigonometry cosine problem for today. I hope it helped, and I'll see you around.